Right, hi there, my name's Jason. Um, I require a software developer. Simple as that, somebody to write me a bit of software. Uh, I'm bringing you the video because I really don't fancy typing out the three or four thousand words it would take to to, to write a project description. Um, I'm no writer, but I am a YouTuber, so uh, obviously I'm a lot more a lot more adapt and a lot more prepared uh, to create a video. So um, I've got my notes here and I'm going to try and do this in one take, but that never never usually happens. Uh, um, okay, so a few fundamentals first. Um, I'm offering £88 uh, to whoever can develop this relatively simple program. It's nothing huge, nothing elaborate, though there's some little intricacies which I'd like to have in there, uh, little details. Uh, £88 I think reflects quite well um, the, the, the complexity of the work that's involved and the amount of time that I expect a competent uh, programmer to be able to do it. That's because I'm a programmer myself. Um, I, I, I program embedded systems, that means I program microchips, so I work well with things like C++. And I know that the, the types of uh, language that can be used to develop this type of software, which I must add is for Windows 10, to be run on Windows 10. You can use Python or C++ or even basic, I don't really care, use whatever language you want. Um, but like I say, I'm a software developer myself. I know what's involved in creating a bit of software like this, and I can reasonably expect anyone with the skill that's required to, to churn this out within about eight to 10 hours. Um, there's nothing hugely complicated involved with it, like I said. Um, use whatever programming language you want. Use Visual Studio if you like. Um, I know I would probably prefer to use Visual Studio for this one. Just keep things simple. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm going to try and front load this video as much as I can, um, just so that not to make it as long as it could be. Um, front loading is basically what I do to a video to try and squeeze down and compact all the information um, just to the first few minutes so that you can quickly decide whether or not this is something you want to work on, work with me on. Um, and if it is, then watch until the end of the video and, um, you know, I'll, I'm going to include, I'm going to go into much more detail and include uh, more information. So the software itself is for, it's to be used in my warehouse. Um, I run an FBA prep service. If you don't know what that is, then I'll I'll drop a link to the uh, website in the video description or in the project project description. Um, you can get a bit bit of more information about what the company is and how it works. Um, but essentially speaking, I'm the middleman between Amazon sellers and Amazon itself. So my customer is the Amazon seller, and my customers they send their uh, deliveries from their suppliers, um, whether it be you know supply um, you know like distributor or manufacturer or something. Uh, their deliveries come to me, and these are bulk deliveries. Sometimes it's just in a few cardboard boxes. Some most of the time it's on pallets. Sometimes even a lorry load or two. But this delivery needs to be checked in, and I need to produce a report for my customer. Um, at the moment, I use Excel to do that. But I would produce a report to my customer which details which products have been received, in what quantity, and in what condition. So the the software I need is basically um, going to allow me to. Um, really streamline that process. The deliveries are getting quite big. There's a lot of items to scan. And at the moment, I'm just doing everything on a spreadsheet using a barcode scanner. Um, and so it's pretty long drawn out. Um, there's, there's a system I go through when I'm pretty sure that a, a, a little computer program can speed up this system quite well. So um, basically the first thing that needs to be done is uh, all the barcodes of all the products need to be scanned. They could just be Let's just assume um, we're just working on the principle of one pallet here. I'm going to go into a bit more detail and I'm going to give you an example of how I check in um, goods in, into the warehouse using a real world example. Um, show you some spreadsheets from a, from a recent delivery. Um, but essentially I'm using the barcode scanner to put information into a spreadsheet um, from the barcodes themselves so it logs what barcodes have been received and in what quantities. Um, there, there may just be, you know, for any given pallet, there may just be one product on that pallet but you know, a thousand units of it. Um, there may be five or six different products, each with about you know five or six um, quantity to them each. Um, so this uh, this software needs to be able to collect the data, collect the information from the barcode scanner. Which, if you're familiar with a barcode scanner, then it's nothing different to the keyboard. Basically, the computer recognizes it as a keyboard. It sends keystrokes to the computer, just like a keyboard. Those keystrokes are usually a sequence of numbers followed by an enter keystroke. Um, so in, in an Excel spreadsheet, uh, if you highlight a cell and beep a barcode with the barcode scanner, it fills that cell up with numbers 
that's proportional to the barcode, and then um, drops down to the next cell because that's what happens when you press enter. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, if this sounds like something you want to work on with me, uh, oh, oh um, yeah, there's there's a there's an element of data scraping involved, yeah, um, uh, because once all the once all the barcodes have been scanned and and and, and recorded, um, I need the software to quickly scrape Amazon, uh, the code UK, that's the Amazon UK website for um, product information. So this is really simple. Um, I think it's the most complicated the most technical aspect of of the build of, of the um of the project but it, it it's it's just data scraping um it's nothing scary if you don't know how to do it already it's pretty simple and you should be able to pick it up qu pretty quickly if you need to learn how to do it if it's something you already know how to do then you'll know that it's it's pretty straightforward you use a bit of code just to skim across amazon's websites and pull information from it that's all really um, you can use you can use Python, CS, uh, C++, whatever. But um, basically, uh, Amazon has a search facility, have a search bar on on the top of the page. If you put an EAN number or a barcode number in that search bar, um, it'll take you straight to the product product that it belongs to. That's if it's being sold on Amazon. That's if there's a listing for it. Um, so yeah, this this software needs to be able to do that. It needs to be able to take the barcode and and use that barcode to identify. Know what product that barcode belongs to, um, uh, and then ultimately, when when all the barcodes have been scanned, um, it produces a report. So um, this mm, this can be done just by spitting out all the information that has been collected onto a spreadsheet, not in its raw data. I'll, I'll show you a little bit later about what I mean by that. But um, the the report uh, basically just looks like a. I give the customer a PDF, and on there it's it's made from um, an Excel spreadsheet, but on there it basically details which which products have been received. So the the um, the barcode number, the the product title which has been pulled off Amazon, the ASIN which is Amazon's unique uh, identifier for that product, like like a barcode number itself, uh, and then the quantity. So how how many of those products have been received, uh, and how many have been damaged as well. Sometimes products get damaged in transit, so the the report details which products have been damaged, how many of them, what barcode belongs to that product. Uh, so the software needs to be able to do that. If, if the software can spit out um, the data into a spreadsheet, I'd prefer it if I can put it straight into the template for the report rather than, you know, produce an Excel file that's just blank, onto a blank spreadsheet. Then for the data have to be to have to be copied from that spreadsheet onto the onto the template spreadsheet. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. I'll tell you what. So um, <coughs> I'll take you through the process um, that I'm currently using to uh, to check in shipments uh, as I'm being as I'm, as they're being received. So, this spreadsheet I'll start with a blank spreadsheet and highlight cell one A. Now, the barcode scanner, like I said before, works just like this. If you highlight a cell, any cell, um, and and basically scan a barcode, it, it just does that. It it puts the barcode it puts the barcode number in the cell and then hits enter. So as you're scanning barcodes, this is what you're seeing in Excel. This is what's happening. Just beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Um, so this is a real world example. This is from yesterday's delivery from one of my customers. Um, and in total, there were 94 barcodes that were scanned. And as you can see, they're just appearing randomly so that, the, you know, it, they weren't scanned in any particular order. I think there was a few people scanning them. Um, so the boxes were being unpacked with the product to the side. Um, you know, the product can look like, just look like this. Um, this isn't one of the products that came in. This, this is a new part for my mountain bike. Um, but it could just be, you know, the products arrive just like this in case packs, which are just cardboard boxes. And there could be something like 40 or 50 of those particular products in that cardboard box. And then the pallet is made up of boxes. So there could be one product in one box, say like, you know, like 50 units. And there could be another box on the pallet which is made up of different products, and and so when you've got two people scanning um, the same the same pallets, just emptying different boxes, this is what you get. You get you get like a random assortment of, of barcodes being put into the cells. Um, so once the workers, once the shop floor workers are done scanning all the barcodes, um, and they're all put back in the boxes, here we've got 94 barcodes scanned. I then take this spreadsheet and then turn it into this. Um, this one 
is basically it's got all the same barcodes on it, but there are five different barcodes here. Yep, five different barcodes. And there are 36 of those barcodes, and there are 34 of those barcodes, and eight each of these barcodes. So this is still pretty much raw data as far as I'm concerned. I can't just give this to my customer and say, here's all the barcodes that have been scanned. I mean, it would be more useful to them than um, than the first spreadsheet, this one. Um, but it's still, it's not what I like to give them. Um, this is more along the lines of what I like to give them. This is the this is the report itself, and this report has been generated um, using using the same barcodes as from this spreadsheet. So we've been able to identify that there are 36 of the first barcode, um, 34 of the second, etc. And here we are. This barcode, the first one, there are 36 of them. This barcode here, there are 34 of them, and one of them was damaged. Um, You'll also notice here there's a product description that belongs to that barcode and an ASIN that belongs to that barcode. So when creating this report, um, the process I'll use is basically, all right, well, okay, I'll start with a template. This is the template. Um, and so this is what I'd like the data set to be put onto from the bit of software once it's all once it's all been sorted. Um, so I'll take this barcode here, go, go, you know, copy and and paste it paste it into that cell Wait, you know i'm not going to do it <coughs> um but then i'll fill in this information so what i'll do is i'll head over to amazon's website which should pop over here amazon.co.uk right pop the barcode into the search field hit enter and it comes up with this funko toy um, so basically this here is the product description or the product title and I'll copy copy that and I'll put it into that cell there yeah this one the ASIN comes from the products page so you should just get one listing so put a barcode in this search facility and press enter you should just get one listing that like what's happened here because barcodes are unique to products further on down this page wait until it loads Further on down this page, in the product details or the technical details, we've got this number here, it's the ASIN number. So I'll basically copy that and I'll put it in put it in the report there. So the data scraping that's involved, it's not more complicated than that. Um, the so, you know a bit of C plus plus, a bit of software or a bit of Java should be able to um, should be able to take uh, an EAN number. And put it into Amazon's search field and identify a product. Copy the product title and then copy uh, the ASIN number here, uh, and then basically log it. I mean, I, I don't know if um, I know there are certain ways to do this. Um, I've got an SQL server on my web space. If you really need like an SQL server, but if you <coughs> if you're writing a simple program using C plus plus or whatever, if you're using Visual Studio, you can just create like a like a little, uh, like a little database file that gets stored on the local drive, and all the information gets gets written to that. So, um, yeah, this is in a nutshell what the software needs to be able to do: um, scan in loads of barcodes, and spit out the 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 sorted data into um, into a spreadsheet like this, and preferably my template. Uh, oh, there's one other thing to mention: this barcode here. This barcode here is proportional to the courier's uh, shipping label. So if I show you the courier's um, shipping label here, so this is this is the same delivery. So this this pallet here, um, or these these barcodes here, belong to this pallet. So this is a photo that was taken of the pallet before it was dis, dis, um, disassembled and all the products inside were scanned. Uh, this barcode here. This is uh, this is the this is the uh, shipping label that belongs to the courier. It's the pallet network, and this is this is the barcode number that belongs to that particular shipment, and so it's the same barcode number which I use to identify my customers' shipments. It is the same shipments. So this is what doing doing this this process is what I call an inbound uh, request, an inbound good request. Um, so that's what that's what the software needs to be called. It needs to be called like an inbound goods request software or something. I don't know. Um, when I'm talking to my my my, my staff, 
and I, I say and I say inbound goods request. This is the process I'm talking about. So this is the process that the software needs to make easy. Um, if this sounds like something you can do, um, then by all means get in touch. I'll, I'll, um, you know, respond to the projects in People Per Hour, or if you haven't come here from People Per Hour, then send me an email. Uh, even even drop me a phone call. My phone number is pretty easy to find. Um, so. Yeah, we'll we'll have a chat. Um, if you're if you're if you've come here from people per hour, I'd appreciate it if you can start your um, your response. If you want to make a response and you want to you want to give me a, a proposal, if you can start your proposal with the word race car, that would be appreciated. All that all that does for me is um, lets me know that you've watched this video until the end, that you fully understood it, um, and that you're prepared to to carry out the work in 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 uh, in its full capacity, uh, you know, do everything, do everything, do everything I need it to do. Um, if you don't put the word race car in the in in the beginning of your response, then I'll just assume it's spam. This is the way I deal with spam on people per hour. Um, so if there's no race car at the beginning of your response, then I'll just assume it's spam, and I probably won't uh, reply. Um, that out the way with. Um, oh, also, if you've come here from people per hour, uh, don't offer me unlimited revisions um, there's no time target on this um, I've been doing you know I've been been carrying out this process uh, using this spreadsheet method with a barcode scanner for quite a while and it would be nice to have a bit of software in place that would automate it and to make it a bit more streamlined um, but I'm, I'm not gonna say that this needs to be done in 24 hours or so um, if it takes a week or two that's fine um, I'm not prepared to have to sort of spend ages and ages working with somebody going over like 10 or 15 revisions until it finally works. It, look, if it works, it works. If you can do it, you can do it. So um, if you're, if in your response you've offered me unlimited revisions, then you're not likely someone I'm, I'm going to work with anyway. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of software. I expect it to work first time. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, like I say, if it sounds like something you, you can do for me, then by all means drop me a line uh, we'll set up a, uh, a video call um, we'll set up a like, a like a zoom meeting or something we'll have a bit bit more of a chat about it um, discuss it further there are some finer details to go over um, not nothing that I really think is worth mentioning now um, but yeah we'll, we'll have a chat and we'll we'll discuss it a bit further so um, yeah I appreciate it. it's been a 18 minute long video, but never mind. I, 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 actually, it's, I've done better than I thought. I thought I might make this last a good 30, 35, 40 minutes. So I've done better than I thought. Uh, well, thanks for thanks for persevering anyway. Bye now.